early on Freshworks was more a company targeted towards SMB and it still is. But, you know, we really set up the separate segment or the mid-market engine, so as to say, because we saw a lot of customers while we were focused on SMB, a lot of large enterprises also buying Freshworks products. So we saw that, hey, there is this opportunity to go after mid-market as well. And setting up that whole mid-market engine was the other really impactful thing and also a lot of learning. This is Sales Ops Demystified, the number one most downloaded podcast in sales operations. We invite the brightest minds in sales ops onto the show to deconstruct the what, why, and how behind rep productivity, forecasting, metrics, and all things revenue. This podcast is brought to you by EVSA, a revenue intelligence platform used to identify risk in the pipeline and score customer engagement and is sponsored by the Global Sales Operations Association and the UK Revenue Operations Network. Hello and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast. Today, we're joined by Siva Rajamani, who is the co-founder and CEO of Eversage. Siva, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Tom. And prior to Eversage, Siva was also director and head of revenue operations at a company which I'm sure many listeners will have heard of, Freshworks. So what I would like to do is understand a little bit more about the revenue operation at Freshworks and then understand your journey from there to to where we are today. So could you just, because I understand Freshworks obviously has the, all of the sub brands, Fresh Desk, Fresh Sales, um, below it. How is the revenue, how is the revenue ops team structured around that? Yeah, great question there, Tom, because uh, I think uh, I should say uh, when we set up revenue operations at Freshworks, we were slightly late in the journey. I think that was also the time when sales ops was transitioning to, towards RevOps. Uh, and um, so we uh, set up revenue operations sometime around 30 million ARR in the Freshworks journey, which is, which is slightly late if you compare to what most companies do today, right? Um, but so the way we structured the team, uh, and I was kind of managing the entire revenue operations globally. Uh, so we had a team of about 25 folks. Uh, uh, overall, uh, as we scaled up, uh, structured around uh, each of the functions, right? So we had folks who were focused on the marketing side of it. There were folks who were focused on direct sales. Some who were focused on indirect. Uh, some focused, obviously, on the customer success side. Um, we didn't have product-wise uh, differentiation. Uh, it was more on the function that we were focused on that uh, that we structured the team around. So, yeah. At least that's the high level structure of the team. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I kind of, I, I, the strategy for Freshworks, I think, was, I guess, to get people in on free trials or whatever on any of the products and then ultimately um, move them around to all of them to, to build, the, to essentially have their whole business based on Freshworks. Was that the approach? Absolutely. Um, I think the uh, biggest part of uh, uh, the Freshworks business was really to uh, try and have. Uh, you know, intent and buying done for one product, and then obviously explore uh, to see if the prospect or the customer would be interested in the suite of uh, products that Freshworks had. Uh, and in a lot of cases, there were also adjacencies in terms of products. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, expansion was a big portion of uh, the go to market strategy for Freshworks. For sure. And I'd actually like to ask as well did you come into Freshworks? to set up the revenue operations org or were you already within Freshworks in a different role? And then they were like, Siva, can you come and do this? Uh, yeah, so I was actually initially as part of the founder's office. So I was working with the founder CEO, uh, Girish, on a bunch of uh, uh, initiatives, primarily on the go-to-market side. Uh, and I think uh, about a year or so in into the role. Uh, and just for context, before that, I was a management consultant. Uh, right. So um, once I came in, uh, I, I did a bunch of initiatives on the go-to-market side. Uh, the founder CEO Girish asked me to 
then move and set up this team for the organization. Uh, so I transitioned internally to set up the revenue operations uh, team. I pulled in a four-member four team. That's how we started off. And then uh, at least when I left, it grew to about 25 members. And according to LinkedIn, there was a 6x in terms of revenue growth. Yes, uh, and I, I think now I can talk about the numbers because it's public. Um, uh, so I saw the journey from about 30 million in ARR to about 200 million in ARR. So uh, lots of learnings, lots of, uh, of course, mistakes that we made and learned from. So uh, great journey, though. That's an absolutely amazing story. What was the one thing that you think you did in the RevOps function that had the biggest impact on revenue? So I think um, uh, back at, back then when uh, we were setting up the RevOps function, um, you know, we didn't have the uh, products as you see now with Freshworks. It was just Fresh Desk and there was Fresh Service. Uh, and there were not too much cross-sell opportunities between these two products, at least back then. Right? Uh, but that was the time when uh, when we set up the RevOps, we were in, uh, having the new uh, products getting introduced like Fresh Sales um, uh, and there was Fresh Chat. Uh, and uh, so a bunch of new products that were coming on board. And, uh, you know, there was this unique opportunity to really uh, get into the whole expansion part of revenue from our existing customers, um, right? So so the entire setting up of that initiative of the uh, account management teams, uh, the, uh, you know, coordination between customer success and account management uh, was one key area. The other area I would say is... Um, Back then, uh, early on, Freshworks was more a uh, uh, company targeted towards SMB, and it still is. Uh, but uh, you know, we really uh, set up the uh, separate segment, or the mid-market engine, uh, so as to say, because we saw a lot of customers. While we were focused on SMB, a lot of large enterprises also buying, uh, you know, Freshworks products. So we saw that hey, there is this opportunity to go after mid-market as well, and setting up that whole mid-market engine. Uh, was the other, um, you know, a really impactful thing uh, and also a lot of learning personally for me. Incredible. And I actually personally am really interested in when people will do good things or learn stuff within an organization and then go on to create a separate business, either based on those learnings or um, with that experience. And it seems like this is the same story here because we now have Everstage that you have founded, which according to LinkedIn is better commission software for sales, ops, and finance people. So could you just please tell, like, what was the problem? And did you realize that as part of your work at Freshworks? Absolutely. Um, so uh, the uh, idea germinated uh, back at my work uh, at Freshworks when, uh, among other things that we were looking to solve, we were trying to uh, uh, find a good tool to automate commissions. Because we certainly saw that, um, you know, at the end of the day, all of us agree uh, on the power of incentives. Uh, but at the end of the day, if incentives are not clear and visible to the customer facing teams, and if you only get that to them at the end of the month or quarter, you know, it really doesn't uh, make much sense. And obviously, it, it, it's, a, uh, it's a painful manual effort month on month if you are not automating it, right? So uh, as every other organization, we try to uh, look for solutions in the market. Um, and at that point, you know, we were very um, uh, underwhelmed to look at what was available and we couldn't find what we wanted. Uh, so that was where, you know, the idea germinated. And we thought, hey, why not build something uh, as RevOps folks we would like to have? And, uh, you know, then I moved out to the leap of faith and started Everstage. And it was not just me. There were uh, a bunch of other revenue operations folks uh, from Freshworks who joined along. And uh, so Everstage is kind of truly... Uh, uh, product built by RevOps for other RevOps folks and SalesOps folks, yeah. So the, the, lead, the current leadership team at Everstage is, is full of RevOps uh, enthusiasts. Absolutely. And, and career RevOps folks. Actually, four of them are from uh, revenue operations background. So um, uh, in, in a team of, you know, we're an early team of about 18 folks. So four of them, um, apart from me, are uh, from revenue operations background. Amazing. And what can I so, say thinking about sales or RevOps person listening now, what steps could they take to improve the way they manage commissions first without the software? And then we can talk a little bit about what the software does after that. Sure. I think uh, early on when a company, uh, in an early stage, uh, it's, it's better to keep everything simple uh, and uh, you know, not complicate or overtly complicate because uh, as, a, uh, as an early stage company, you're still trying to figure out your right go-to-market motion, 
uh, you want to figure out what the right quota setting uh, for your customer facing teams is, etc. So you don't want to be very uh, uh, complicated in your commission structure. You want to keep it as simple as possible early on. And while doing that, try and make sure uh, you know you get the visibility out uh, to your teams, right? Because uh, while you are uh, you know early on, it makes sense to just you know when you're a five member team, ten member team, customer facing teams, you know it's better to do it on spreadsheets because it's simpler. Uh, but still, try and uh, have visibility provided to uh, the folks who are on the uh, go to market side because uh, incentives really work. They drive performance. They motivate people to push harder. Uh, it's important to not only give them that visibility, but also uh, you know try and have simple calculators in place, just made on Google Sheets or uh, you know any spreadsheet for that matter, to just for them to you know play around and say how they can make more commissions, right? Uh, just to have that visualization in place so that uh, they know what they get uh, personally if they were to achieve uh, something ahead uh, and. That really also obviously drives performance for the company. I think this is such a good point. Like, I've I've worked in companies previously where the commission process is like a big black box, and it's like the final day of the month, and the person realizes how much they get. And so this it just makes it's such a simple change to a en- enable someone to see it almost in real time, but then also be like play around, right? <laughs> so that makes total sense. And I assume that's what EverStage will do if you don't want to use Google Sheets. Absolutely, because I, I think after a point, spreadsheets don't scale. Uh, so that's when you know all companies look at automation. Uh, while you know, automation is a big uh, you know productivity uh, improvement for the ops and finance teams, uh, I think the real power uh, of incentives is when you unlock the visibility and uh, use it to kind of motivate and drive performance. So you know, EverStage not only uh, is a no-code uh, auto- uh, commissions automations platform, but also helps. Uh, motivate and drive performance through uh, gamification modules like uh, you know simulators where uh, uh, you know go to market teams and uh, customer facing teams can actually play around to see how they can make more commissions and essentially drive the behavior that you want um, right so so yeah that's that's the motivation um, for every stage yeah amazing Alex I'm going to bring you in to ask some more challenging questions about sales commissions thanks very much Tom and um, and thanks very much, Siva. That's uh, it was really um, enlightening to listen to. And um, I must admit, with, with my background, I've got a, a, a very little um, time on the commission side, so I, I'd be fascinated to ask some more pieces there. But before we, we got to that, one thing that really stood out to me from you, you, know, you talking to Tom about your Freshworks experience was really talking about the expansion opportunity. And, and again, lots of as you said, depending on the stage at the start, often the big focus is just new sales, new logos, bring them on board, and then you sort of transition to really trying to maximize the accounts. And then maybe later you start to worry about more, even more about retention. Um, can you just give some advice around your experience of how you really, in a bit more detail, how would you try and you know, drive that expansion model and push that out to the teams? So I think um, uh, one of the things was uh, 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 just from the context of Freshworks, Freshworks, at least at that point, was a high-velocity business, right? Uh, as I was saying, uh, uh, SMB focus. So you had a lot of customers, global customers, paying customers on board. Um, uh, so the first step was really even identifying what are the potential opportunities for other products for us, right? Uh, so um, the first step really was to get all our data in place because this was a high-velocity business. There's just so much data. Just getting all of it together to be able to then start to make sense and identify potential opportunities was really the first step uh, towards even looking at possible expansion. And once we did that, uh, the second step then was to, you know, after we identified the potential companies, the potential products that we could, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, suggest to them, uh, the n- next step was really creating the org structure for you to be able to carry that forward. Because obviously, uh, the account executives who are uh, responsible for the new revenue uh, wouldn't be, uh, a, uh, you know, uh, the right. Uh, teams to actually go after this expansion, right? So just setting the organization structure, the rules of engagement in place between these teams, um, and then, uh, uh, you know, putting the quotas uh, that you want them to go after, uh, the kind of uh, products that you want them to go after, etc., uh, came uh, post that. And then obviously the third part was just, um, you know, putting the right uh, incentives as well. As well. Uh, like what, what we did was... Um, 
we also, uh, you know, once expansion, we saw the potential of expansion, we also started to see even early on um, for the account executive, when they're making that initial sale, if they can identify potential future opportunities right then, so that, you know, that acts as, as a, a, a like kind of a opportunity or a lead uh, that could be suggested to the account management team and, you know, kind of incentivize that behavior so that, uh, you know, they work hand in hand to be able to uh, uh, fully explore that opportunity. That was a really helpful um, model. Thank you. And um, I two, two follow-ups, and I'll, I'll mention them both now, but I may ask them separate. So, so one is just to talk a bit about, and I think probably people are quite clear at this, but I've certainly seen it handled differently, the you know, getting um, the, the account execs to handle to handle expansion rather than leaving it all on the customer sort of success side. Um, but the other one really was, was your first point of sort of get the data together. And I'd just love to know a bit more about how what, what how you decided what data was necessary to identify what solutions were most, most likely for customers and to really target those efforts. So I think, um, l- let me answer your second question first then. So uh, I think for the data, um, we uh, obviously got all of the CRM data in place, but like every CRM, uh, the data was not complete, uh, right? Like, so essentially you had to enrich the data further in terms of customer profiling, um, right? So most part of the enrichment was on the customer profiling, which is, hey, which industry are they? What's the employee size are we going after in this customer base? Um, and what's the patterns that you see, right, uh, after you enrich all of those? So basically, after you enrich geography, employee size, industry, vertical, and uh, 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 also, you know, uh, uh, some data points uh, like uh, on, you know, how big their sales teams are, how big their customer support teams are, etc. Uh, then really trying to find patterns and seeing what the common pattern is. Hey, in this industry vertical, in this geography, we see that, you know, there's a common theme where the sales teams are large enough. So should we go and pitch? Uh, and they have a very um, um, uh, uh, a high velocity model. So you know maybe uh, our CRM product could you know fit in well there. Or for uh, for example, uh, you see that the company is really large. They have uh, a, a big IT team or an uh, you know HR team in place. Uh, so essentially trying to profile and create those uh, ICPs, ideal customer profiles, uh, before then uh, before that you can go after. Um, uh, those those uh, potential customers against the particular product. So that's what we did. So a lot of the work uh, was enrichment uh, of uh, customer profiles uh, so that we can then kind of aggregate them and then call a strategy for that particular aggregate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Really, really helpful. I love the idea of, yeah, just, just segmenting and then analyzing the historical data and um, working. So and and then how how often were you refreshing the model? Because again, if if it hadn't been a focus before, I suppose my first thing is, well, how good quality is the data we've actually got here historically? Did you know what what was your sort of refresh rate on, to, you know, checking if your assumptions were correct? So um, I think uh, um, I think the refresh rate on uh, on the strategy itself was very quick, right? Like we uh, you know rolled it out. We had a monthly kind of um, you know check in to see. Uh, you know, what's working, what's not working. And obviously that reflected also in code attainments for your account management teams uh, at the end of the day, uh, right? So um, so the feedback was very quick because their incentives were also dependent on that. So, you know, we got to know uh, pretty quick. But uh, once we knew that something was working, obviously it's still data is going to get stale uh, over time. So we had a six-month refresh of the data enrichment process um, and uh, try to keep it as real and live as possible for us to then make judgments on top of it. Great, thank you, that's yeah, really helpful. And then just, just to, um, a point I probably well understood, but but your reasons before having, you know, making sure the account managers were handling the, the expansion process rather than the CSM? Right, so I think uh, this is a great question because uh, we had a big dilemma, uh, right, of whether to have this handled by the customer success teams or uh, create this new account management team uh, to be able to handle it. Um, and eventually, our decision-making process then was more around, um, uh, at least with the context of Freshworks, you know, there were uh, multiple products uh, that Freshworks had, uh, which not necessarily um, were um, selling into the same teams, right? So you had all of these products uh, that were selling into different teams within an organization. Uh, so what that meant is, even though there's an ex- the same stakeholder, 
you still had to identify a new stakeholder in the team uh, who could be a very different function, uh, right? And your current champion within the company may not even probably be interacting with that stakeholder. So um, it was in some sense hunting within that organization to then kind of go after and uh, find the right uh, uh, stakeholder and then go and pitch the product. So it involved much more than just, uh, you know, your uh, uh, customer's happiness, the customer being, you know, whatever customer support team for fresh desk and ID team for fresh service, it went beyond that team. So uh, because there was this perspective of hunting that needed to be done within that organization, uh, we uh, realized that, you know, let's put this as a separate team who's in, uh, who's really focused on creating those, uh, you know, stakeholder mapping and relationships across the board. While the customer success continued to focus and make sure the current product was adopted and the uh, company was happy with, uh, you know, the product uh, that they were using uh, and was giving us, you know, feedback, testimonials, etc. So, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. I think a really helpful, um, not just overview of, of the decision in general, but just really the specifics on why you did it. So I think they're yeah, really helpful for people like, thinking about you know, weighing those same same decisions. So wanting to switch now um, and talk a bit about um, Everstage. And one of the, the things that you mentioned that was particularly um, interesting to me was 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 yeah, you were hammering home on the you know the importance of visibility, which made sense. You know the, the point of commissions is incentivize incentivizing behaviour, so you, you want to make that that clear. Otherwise, you lose you lose that element of it. And then you, you mentioned about sort of this gamification module. So so how have you seen sort of gamification and really how have you been able to sort of add to that that just that monetary incentive as well with gamification? Yeah. So I think um, um, obviously. Uh, you uh, you know typical B two B companies uh, tech companies that you take uh, a commission plan has a couple of two or three different criteria right you typically compensate them on revenue then you probably then incentive I mean and the revenue has like some tiering where you have accelerators when you hit the higher tiers um, and then you have additional uh, incentives like hey if you were to close this more multi year contract then you know you have the added incentive or, uh, you know, uh, do it on something else, right? Like two or three different uh, components, typically. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, what happens is if the, uh, you know, uh, new sales and with the kind of growth rates that we're seeing uh, and the importance of, you know, growth, a lot of new uh, sales folks on a constant basis in a particular team who really don't even understand, you know, how the current compensation plan is structured. And everybody knows it's on revenue close, but wouldn't know some of the nuances of the other aspects of the compensation plan, which you want to drive as behavior. You want to probably reduce the churn rate and therefore push more annual deals instead of monthly deals, for example, or multi-year contracts. So you have specifically put that component in place to drive a certain behavior that helps uh, get you your business impact uh, or metric that you want to achieve. Um, so with gamification, what you could do is, uh, one, give visibility that, hey, there is this component that is even there uh, for you to go after. But think of it this way, right? Um, an account executive, um, you know, what if, uh, and that's what we have in Everstage, like can open out their pipeline within Everstage and then say, hey, what if I'm able to close this deal in this month uh, and this other deal, right? How much will that push my code attainment to? How much more commissions can I make from that? But that's one step. What if they can play around with that data and say, hey, what if I'm able to offer 5% lesser discount on this deal? What if I move this deal from a monthly deal to an annual deal? Uh, right? What's the additional commission that I could get to make? And really uh, visualize the uh, uh, you know monetary uh, payouts that they could make if they were to take some actions even before they close the deal. So because then that reinforces in them that, hey, you know, uh, that's the right thing that I want to do or right that I want to push in order to, uh, before I close the deal, and essentially, uh, you know, you get to that behavior. So it's important that um, the behavior uh, is, uh, the need for that behavior is realized even before they close the deal, not post facto, you know, once they get their commission statements. So, yeah. Great, no, thank you. That was, that was really helpful and is certainly sparking all sorts of thoughts in my head about, as I try and build some gamification fe features in, and I've been doing a little bit of reading about it into some of the stuff I'm doing, but um, that was fascinating. And I think probably time for Tom for you to come back um, and ask our final question. Thank you, Alex. Siva, the final and most important question of the interview. Who in the world of sales or RevOps would you most like to take for lunch? 
I think uh, I've, uh, in the last one year, really admired a couple of revenue operations professionals. Uh, one's Rosalyn. Um, and uh, so sh- so she's really been, uh, you know, uh, sharing a lot of uh, uh, good revenue operations content across the board. Um, and uh, I think she's been doing a terrific job just propagating RevOps across the board. Uh, so I think, uh, I mean, yeah, even... Forget two. I think if there's one, probably I would say her. I think she's really been doing a lot of uh, um, uh, awareness of revenue operations as a function, and also uh, just you know sharing a lot of uh, knowledge and content and wealth of um, you know specific context that she has gone through in her experience for a budding revenue operations profession. So, uh, well, yeah. What was the name again? Just to be clear, Rosalind, Rosalind Santa Elena. Rosalind Santa, amazing. We will reach out. She sounds amazing. I, I, I can't believe I haven't heard of her before. Siva, I want to thank you for coming on and sharing like some quite open stats about your Freshworks journey. Um, and then also the core thing that I really like about what you have brought to the table, which is something you realize at Freshworks, but sometimes you're trying to, something you're trying to bring to life with Everstage is the transparency of the commission. If we can do that, it, it improves the lives of the salespeople. It improves the lives of the sales ops or rev ops people because we're going to hit more likely to hit the goal. So for the, that's the one thing I'd love the audience to take away. And Siva, thank you for, for bringing that to us. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Tom and Alex. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Sales Ops Demystified Podcast. If you are listening on a podcast listening application, then please subscribe, rate, and review. And if you have any questions about the show, if you know a guest, or if you have any questions about sales operations, just hit me up at tomhunt at ebster.com. That's tomhunt at ebster.com.